Hey there guys, in this video we're going to be going back to the November Clash and getting a rank 1. If you saw my live stream, you saw me figure it out blind, it was very very messy and chaotic, the boss seemed pretty hard. Now that i figured out the boss, it's significantly easier. So let's get in here and get a rank 1. So this is the party we're going to be using. Ronda for mitigations and covering. Aya for the biggest damage as well as healing down. Um, Hayo for the leader skill, the field, and the breaking. Dwayne for arcane supplementation as well as some damage. He's the most replaceable here. Um, Melissa for LB fill as well as mitigation and cooldown reduction. And then Deuce for all the killers, the field, the healing, etc. So, as it turns out, the most important thing to make this boss simple is to never use any magic whatsoever. That was my problem during my live stream. I kept using magic, the boss kept getting pissed off, and it was really hard. If you don't use magic, it's honestly relatively simple. <laughs> so Hayo is going to Inferega the party. Then we're going to do Breaker Claw Physical and Breaker Claw Magic. Aya Brea will do... Barrier, Gene Heal, and Haste. Ronda will just LB for the mitigation. Dwayne will Oath, Blood Shield, and kind of whatever. Melissa will do Chronic, Parasol, and Minutes. Deuce will do... We'll put up a stat field for the early turn. So Warrior's Rhapsody, Hymn of Healing, and Double Curega. Okay, so Deuce will heal us up, and we're good. So because we didn't use any magic whatsoever, any offensive magic, that is, um, <clears throat> the boss is not going to buff himself, and he's not going to use extra attacks. And it'll be a really simple turn. As you can see, if you don't use magic, the boss is, like, really chill. Really chill. Uh, anyway, the boss does have these undispellable mitigation buffs, so we can't do much for right now. So Aya Brea on this turn, we'll just shift here. And we'll do a little bit of stuff in the shift form. We'll go ahead and do... Um, we'll do her fire imbue, awaken, and then just a P90, kind of whatever. Ronda will cover... Whoops. Ronda will cover, <coughs> bolting, and protect her. Hayo's going to shift here. Now, Hayo is our passive provoker. He's going to, in the shift form... Do Guard Claw and Shield Claw for the mitigations, and also I will Master the Sword. Dwayne will just LB this turn, kind of whatever. Melissa will do uh, All the Killers, just doesn't really matter on who, that's just for the morale game. And Deuce is going to swap over to, um, not that, nope, nope. We're going to do the Stat Field, but then we're going to swap to Dark Green Nocturne. Symphony of Camaraderie, and then a Curega. Make sure to never use the offensive magic on uh, on Deuce. Uh, one second. Fire Imbue plus Awaken. I'm updating my turn chart, make it slightly more optimal for you guys. Okay, anyway, because we didn't use magic, once again, pretty simple turn. Pretty simple turn. Okay, this turn, we're going to try to do a little bit of damage. It's not going to be much, honestly. Um, but we're going to use, because the boss still has this undispellable uh, <coughs> mitigation buff. So we're going to use Hayo on this turn to go to the base form. We're going to do Inferega, Blazing, Blazing Brand, and Refined Stance. Aya will shift at LB, and Dwayne is not going to SLB. Dwayne is going to true Bioga Blade this turn. Runda will SLB. <coughs> we're going to swap Melissa, I'm sorry, Deuce. To doing the Amplify field. Then we're going to do Dark Green, Symphony, and Curega. And Melissa will do, uh, let's see, Shared. We're going to do Killer on Aya, and we'll just do another Killer on anyone. And we'll go ahead and chain these up. Again, the boss has mitigation. This is going to do like 1% damage or less. 1%. That's fine. Really, we're basically just waiting for the mitigation to go away, and we're building our morale gauge. This party doesn't have a ton of morale generation. It's got Melissa. That's kind of it for our, our morale generation. Okay. So this turn, we're going to use Hayo to put up in Ferega again, once the autocasting finishes. Notice the boss's buffs are finally gone. So we're going to in Ferega. 
We're going to undermine for the 89 break, and we're going to field. Deuce is going to put up all the killers. So we're going to do machine killer, demon killer, human killer, and we're going to dark green again. Dwayne will SLB this turn as we get ready for bursting later. <coughs> um, Aya Brea will just triple bolting on this turn, and we're going to chain triple bolting with our Runda for a little bit of damage on the boss. It's not going to be a lot of damage, but it'll be a little bit. Okay, so we chain this up, and we're waiting on Melissa. We're not using Melissa yet. Okay, now Melissa, as the very last action, will SLB on Deuce. It's very important that you make sure Deuce's animations are finished. Otherwise, it won't reduce the cooldown of her killers. She'll still be considered, like, in casting. But there, there we go. We've reduced the cooldowns on Deuce's killers to give us full uptime for later. <laughs> and again, because we're not using magic, the boss is, like, not even doing anything, as you can tell. It's, like, very, very, very low damage. Okay, so we're not going to burst on turn 5. Bursting on turn 5 will piss off the boss pretty terribly. We're going to burst on turn 6 instead. So for this turn, we're going to use Melissa to Human Killer on Hayo. We're going to Shared Immunity. And then just another killer on anyone, doesn't matter. Dwayne is going to Arcane Supplementation, Imbue, and 150 Amplify. Aya Brea is going to 180 Amplify. Necrosis as well. And then Awaken Mitochondria. Runda is going to do cover, Protectga, and Bolting. Hayo is going to do um, 180 amp. I'm sorry, go to the shift form. 180 amp, which is ultimate flame. Then we're going to do guard claw and Bolting claw. Um, and we'll try to chain this with Runda a little bit. It's not going to properly chain, but it might do like a percent or two. Hey, 2%, yay. Uh, and then Deuce is now going to do... We're going to swap over to the LB field with Epic of Fighting Spirit, Symphony, Dark Green, and Curega. Now, because we're still in Phase 1 on Turn 5, the boss is going to do like nothing. It's a free turn, basically. Phase 2 on turn 5 is crazy painful, and as you saw in my live stream, it's it's hard to deal with. But this is going to be a nothing turn. <coughs> so here we go. Okay. Uh, so now we are going to burst. So we are going to... We've already got arcane supplementation, so the morale skills aren't really important. We're going to use Hayo's shifted LB, Aya's shifted LB, Dwayne's LB. Now, I know I told you never use magic, but we got to deal with the chain count turn, the chain count score. Because we're going to push the boss below 50 anyway, we're going to trigger a counterattack with some magic. So Deuce will do a triple Fyra and then a uh, Curega. So we're going to chain, we need to, we need to get that 100 count chain score. So we're going to chain Hayo and Aya. Wait just a second, then we're going to send in Deuce, then we're going to send in Dwayne. That'll be the 100 count chain score, as well as our damage cap. It'll also push the boss below 50%. So here we go. That, that, and this. We're waiting on Melissa and, uh, and Runda. Pretty good damage, pretty good damage. So Runda's now going to SLB to refill our LB gauge, and Melissa's going to triple bar dark you. Now, because we did um, use a magic attack, the boss is going to get pissy. He's going to buff himself and do some extra attacks. Because it's on the threshold turn, it's going to be overall pretty much a nothing turn. It's great. So here we go. So all these counterattacks are mostly lost in the threshold. So that, that, that's the only safe turn to really use a magic attack. Nine billion damage. How you love that? <laughs> So here's some attacks, as well as some fixed damage, etc. We've got barriers and all that, so we're good. There was the threshold. No risk whatsoever. Perfect, perfect. Unfortunately, we do have two turns of the boss's unremovable buffs. That's very unfortunate. Um, but, you know, we're going to just wait it out. That's okay. We're still going to do a little bit of bursting right now, though. So we're going to use Dwayne's SLB. That's not Dwayne. Dwayne's SLB. We're going to use Aya Bray's Shifted LB along with Hayo. Before we do that, we're going to use Amp Field on Deuce. 
we're going to put up dark green again and then just double Kyrega because notice we did get a big gravity attack this turn. <coughs> okay, uh, we're going to wait on Melissa and Runda yet again. So we'll go ahead and do the attack and magic buff. Don't do the defense buff though. So let's go ahead and do some burst here. The boss has mitigation and defense buff. It's not going to do a ton of damage, but it'll do a little bit of damage. Hey, every little bit helps. So now run is going to normal LB to fill LB gauge, and we'll just reload Melissa for a triple bar dark jump. So this turn is going to be a relatively low damage turn. Hayo is going to get some hits. Now, Hayo may or may not counter. If he does counter, it'll be great. If he doesn't, that's okay. We've got a backup plan. He did counter. Okay, that's good. So because Hayo countered, he dispelled the boss's fire imbue. We wanted that to happen. That is good for our, our strategy. So now what we're going to do on turn 8, if Hayo did not counter, we would use Deuce to dispel. So if he didn't counter, the first action is dispel the boss with Deuce. Because Hayo did counter, we can dark green instead. Also, we're going to do all the killers. By the way, we got completely dispelled, and so did the boss. So notice, the, notice our buffs are gone, and the boss's breaks are gone, but his buffs are not. That's okay. So we're going to dark green reduce and do all three of the killers. We're rebuffing everything. Now, Hayo is going to break again in the base form, and notice his undermine is on cooldown. So we're going to use Melissa to SLB on Hayo to both 80% myth the party, as well as to get Hayo's break ready to go. So we're going to imbue the party with fire, we're going to undermine for the breaks, and we're going to refresh that field this turn. We also need Mirage. This is a painful turn, so we're going to use the base form of um, Aya Brea. We're going to pair Barrier, Gene Heal, and Haste for the Mirage stacks. I'm going to go ahead and do this. Ronda is going to cover Protectka and Bolting Strike. Because, you know, we got the spell, we need cover. Uh, Dwayne is going to Fire Imbue and Double Bolting. Now, we're also going to go ahead and do the big defense buff and the big attack buff. Because this turn is going to be really painful. Depending on cover mitigation, all that, Runda might even die. Probably not, though. As long as you dispel the Fire Imbue on the boss, Runda should overall be okay here. Um, so we'll see what happens here. I think he's going to be fine, honestly speaking. He wasn't fine, but he re-raised. Whatever, who cares? We're good. We're good. We're good. That's okay. As long as he covers the first hit and survives, we're fine. We're fine. Not a problem. So, turn nine. Um, this is going to just be a triple uh, fixed damage turn. So what we're going to do, Hayo, we're going to burst again. Notice the boss's buffs are gone, the, the defense buff. So we're going to shift it LB Hayo. We're going to shift it LB <coughs> Ayabrea. We're going to LB Dwayne. Uh, before we do this, we're going to use Melissa to shared immunity. Parasol, this is all because Runda died. And Minutes of Might. Deuce is going to amp field with Nature's Fantasia. We're going to dark green. And we're going to just Curega twice. Now this turn is just going to be some fixed damage. No actual damage. Or no... Like real attacks. We don't need cover. So we're going to use Runda, but not yet. We're going to burst first. So the goal here is to burst under 25% to get into the final phase. That's a little bit important for this turn. So we're going to go ahead and burst right here. Wait, 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 wait. Use Dwayne. Beautiful. We went way more than we needed. That's totally fine. Your DPS might be lower. Not a big deal. Now Run is going to SLB to fill LB gauge and put up those mitigations because once again, he died. That's okay. We don't need cover this turn. Deuce might guts here. She didn't. Or maybe it's next. I'm sorry. Next turn, Deuce, Deuce is going to guts. Yeah. Gravity damage, painful. That's all it is. And then some, some attack with Runda's mitigation. You should be fine. It looks dangerous, but we're okay. We're okay. So now we're going to get ready to burst next turn. Now, this is going to be a very painful turn on the boss. So what we're going to do as the first action, we're going to SLB Dwayne. First action, very important. Second action, Melissa 
is going to all-consuming darkness for the healing down on the boss as well as for the dark imbue, etc. Then we're going to seconds of support on Dwayne to fill his LB gauge back up. And then we're going to do, um, I guess, a Curega. Let me actually adjust my turn chart real quick. Okay. Yeah, so we'll do that. <clears throat> okay, so now we are imbued with darkness. So in order to get rid of that bad dark imbue, we will use Blaze Weapon on Hayo to get the dark imbue out of here. Then we're going to do, again, he, he's provoking this turn. He needs mitigation. So Guard Claw and Shield Claw. Ayabrea on this turn will do her Fire Imbue, her um, Awakened Mitochondria, and I Might Be a Monster. Runda, we need cover this turn. He's going to cover, he's going to protect Ga, and he's going to Bolting Strike to chain with Hayo a little bit. Uh, and Deuce is going to go ahead and do Dark Green. We're going to Amp Field, and then just double Curaja, or Curaga. And that should top the party back off. <laughs> okay, so we also need Hayo to hopefully counter the boss this turn. It's a little bit RNG. So we're going to go ahead and do both the defense and the spirit and the, the attack buff. A little bit of damage here, not really. Next turn is the big damage. So this turn is going to be some AoE. Uh, you probably noticed Deuce probably guts there. That's okay. We're absorbing that. Now we need Hayo to counterattack. He did. If he did not counterattack, it is still okay. It is still okay. Okay, so now we're going to kill the boss. Turn 11 is going to be our kill turn. We're going to put up the killers again with Deuce. Oh, they're not ready, but you know what? We've got, we've got Melissa. So Melissa is going to SLB Deuce. And then Deuce is going to do all the killers. As well as uh, a dark green again. LBU, LBU, um, let's see, Runda can triple bolt in here just for whatever. Now, if Hayo had not countered, the boss would have mitigation and defense buff and all that. So you would have Hayo manually, normal, attack. Um, I think I'm going to do that to show you the worst case scenario. If he does counter and you don't need that, have him LB for extra damage. But um, if... in Okay, I, I really want I really want to show you this so I can get a good damage breakdown. But I, I promise you, you will from 12%, even from like 20%, just Aya and Dwayne with the ramping amp would still kill. But I, I, I want the damage breakdown to show Hayo properly. So we're going to let him just go ahead and burst as well. And now Ronda can just jump in here as well for some attacks. And there's our rank 1. Relatively smooth, as long as you specifically follow the mechanics... Honestly, it's not that bad of a fight. It's very, very squishy. 5.6 billion damage on a follow-up turn. We did 9 billion on the burst turn. So, yeah, the damage cap is not hard here. The only hard thing is the mechanics, but follow my turn chart, you will be golden. Perfect score. And I see a damage breakdown. There we go. Like I said, Aya Brea is the big boy damage here. Hayo, pretty good as well. Dwayne, eh replaceable, honestly speaking, but he also gave us arcane supplementation, so that's kind of nice. Deuce, a lot of killers, and then Melissa, etc. So let's go ahead and show the gear and all that. I'm already finished farming. I, I love this clash. <laughs> Any clash I'm finished farming before I'm done my videos, I'm happy. Okay, so here is the party. As far as espers go, the only one that's critical is we put um, Ayabrea on the overkiller esper. Ramu for demon killer. There is no overkiller for human or machine that I'm aware of, at least not yet. Um, and Runda's on a fire resist esper. So the gear. So Deuce is not getting any leader skill whatsoever. So you want her with some decent spirit, defense, and HP. So we gave her <coughs> the Omni Tank card for the lot of defense, spirit, and HP some bulk, etc. And the whole party needs status immunity, by the way. Or specifically immunity to blind, silence, confuse, and paralyze. So there we go, some bulk. And we gave her mystic tenacity for more racial mitigations because, uh, yeah, we need all the mitigation possible on her because she's very squishy. Oh, and we gave her guts because on turn, I think, 9 or 10, she's going to guts from the damage every time. 
That'll be nice, nice and fine with the Source of Guts. Melissa, just some morale fill. She does have a leader skill, so her bulk is fine. Status immunity. I gave her guts just in case. <coughs> it should never, it should never matter. Uh, Dwayne, <coughs> status immunity with cool, coin of fate. Edgar, there we go. A lot of machine killer, human killer, demon killer, etc. Uh, I think he's a tiny bit short on killers. Yeah, 275 LB, 300 demon, human, and 250 machine. Couldn't quite fit all the killers on him, but whatever, we got it done. Hayo and Panthera, um, you know, getting a lot of good gear, 20,000 attack power, there it is. Uh, passive Provoke, Looming Wrath, and Blizzard Orb, if you don't have Looming Wrath, give him Proof of Talent, uh, because him counterattacking is how we're getting our perfect dispels, and he's our Passive Provoker for all the attacks that ignore cover. So give him some defense and HP as well. I know 16,000 HP is really low, but uh, it was enough, it was good enough, and I gave him his own card. Yes, I did pull for it. Uh, Aya Brea in the base form. Her base form does not get a leader skill because her base form is Earth Tag, not Fire. Keep that in mind. So give her some bulk in the base form. Physical bulk, uh, defense, and HP. Uh, we gave her the Celestite and the Treasured Ring, etc. Shift form is damage, and she really claps this boss really hard. I love it. She's so good at this fight. Uh, status immunity, etc. And then Runda is a little bit of fire resist. Honestly, you don't need much. We both we basically dispel the boss's fire imbue, so forget that. Um, some bulk, status immunity, um, also passive provoking, but he is behind uh, behind Hayo in the party order. So make sure Hayo is ahead of Runda or further to the left in the party order so that Hayo gets the single target attacks. And Runda is there just as a backup passive provoker in case things start going wrong. Okay, turn chart will be in the comments, and I already, I already see it. Show me a clear without Hayo. Give me time. Give me time. It is a holiday weekend, so I might not be as available tonight, but uh, there's the run. Hope it helps. I will be doing more over the course of these two weeks. See you then.